Hey guys, Cat72 here. Hope everyone's doing well. Um, today I want to go over um, another installation of a uh, car dash cam. Now, the reason why I say another is because I previously have a video. If you search my videos, there was another installation I did, um, and that was called the G Max C23 or C32. Um, actually, it was a C CE12, is what it was. Uh, the only difference between that one and this one is this one's strictly just a camera uh, installation with the rear camera as well, whereas the G-Mac was a both front and rear camera, but it was inside of a uh, rear view mirror. Um, that one worked great. I liked it, but um, because of Texas always being very hot and sunny, um, the reflection was just a little too much for me, and I just it, it kind of interfered with me actually being able to see the video uh, with the reflection. Uh, but all in all, it was a very, it, it was a very good camera. So anyway, we're going to do a quick unboxing. This one here, ironically, talk about good advertisement, uh, is called, if you can see that, let's see if I can focus here. Anyway, it's by, I'm probably pronouncing it wrong, but it's B I U um, O N E dash cam, which if you think about it, it could be pronounced buy you one talk about good um uh advertisement right buy you one <laughs> anyway um thought that was funny um let's go over some of the quick things features it's it's full hd um uh, you can take photos with it it's got a wide angle um it's got collision detection it's got cycle recording motion detection and uh, low light enhancement. Um, I gotta tell you guys, the quality of this camera is good both day and night. Uh, anyway, let's get the box open here. It'll just be a quick video. Um, the reason why I say that is because, well here, we'll get to that in a minute. I'll, I'll explain why it's gonna be a quick installation. So here's the camera itself. I've already opened it up. I've played with it. Um, it's, uh, as you can see right there, buy you one uh and i'm probably butchering the name but it does look like buy you one so that's kind of funny you'd need to buy you one i guess is what they're trying to say um so this is the camera obviously you get your uh, front uh suction mount for the camera and it installs very easy if you can look under here there's a little grommet kind of like the in the shape of a square or rectangle and if you look at the top of the camera it's got the same exact um, shape so basically you would just slide it in pull it to the right and there you go it's mounted uh, you get of course all your power cable well this is the actual rear camera this let's, let's do that first and this is the rear camera and it's got two ways to mount it you can either do it by sticky tape or two screws that are included uh, this is the actual camera that's where the two screws would go, or if you choose, that's where the um, sticky tape would go. And it's got four LEDs that uh, really don't light up a whole lot. I'm not sure why they have those there. Um, but yeah, they, they light up, but not as bright as you would think. And then, of course, you've got a very long, I would say it's probably about a good 13, 14 foot uh, power cable. And uh, what what this would do is actually this would um, plug into the top of the camera just like uh, so it's got the AVN input that's where this would go that's what's going to give you the visual and the ability to use the rear camera <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> and then if you choose to um, this here um, is going to go to your rear backup light the positive cable and that activates the LEDs to turn on when you're backing up. Um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna mount that. I don't really care for the LEDs. Now, I do wanna test this though. I don't know if by having this connected, it signals that you're in backup mode and so the screen will automatically come to full screen as you're reversing. Now, without this connected, the power cable, you will have visual of the rear camera, but it's gonna be up on the far right, or you have the ability to change it to half screen where it's the front, uh, if, you, if you split the screen in half, this side would be the uh, front camera, this would be the rear, or you have the ability to only view the rear, 
or you have the ability to view the front, which is mainly gonna take up the whole screen, and then just a small little corner section up here will be your rear, rear camera. Um, like I said, I wanna test this to see if by having this power connected, you don't have to come over here and switch from re uh, rear view if you're backing up. I'm thinking once the power triggers the camera LEDs, that indicates for this to switch to backup camera and you don't have to worry about fiddling around with the buttons here to get it into that um, transition. So we're gonna test that out later. <clears throat> and you get your power cable. <clears throat> typical lighter um, power cable and it's a mini or I shouldn't say mini it's a um, USB um, connection power connection but that's not mini I forgot what they call this one uh, but that's it right there if you can focus on that and the reason why I say this is going to be a pretty quick video is because this <clears throat> actual power cable is exactly the one the GMAC uses so I already have that in my vehicle so we're not going to use this I'll just have this as a backup and then, of course, your data cable, if you wish to transfer uh, data from in, in the event you do get in a car wreck or a fender bender, um, you have the ability to just connect this into your PC, connect this into your camera, and you can transfer the video. Um, what I like about it, too, is it comes with this USB adapter 2.0. And what you do is you'll take the SD card that's in the camera, pop this in here, and you can slide that into the uh, PC if you don't wish to actually connect it via the camera. So you have the ability to do it straight through the camera to transfer video, or you can just pop your SD card in here once you take it out of the camera, plug this into your PC, and you can actually upload or, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, upload or download your video um, with the USB. Um, you get these little sticky mounts, <clears throat> a wiping cloth. These little sticky mounts don't, aren't really worth using. They, I never have used them. I just tuck my wiring under the uh, headliner and it, it works fine. Um, but that's that's what you get. I think you get, what, four of them? Five of them. Uh, you get this little plastic tool that's pretty much to help you push the cable up into the um, headliner. Um, I did it with my fingers. It was no issue at all. The headliners are never going to be that tight where you need something like this, but it's nice that they would include this little tool if you need it. <clears throat> you get um, the installation information. They tell you where it could be mounted, how to run the cable. Um, and then, of course, it shows you that you have to have that adapter uh, connected and then into the AV and put on the camera in order for this whole thing to work. Um, they give you some, um, you know, reasons and solutions to issues you might come across. I thought that was pretty cool. And then, of course, you get your question pamphlet if you have any questions. Pretty informative. That's pretty cool. And then, of course, you get your uh, user's manual. Now, I didn't really want to go over um, how to use the settings on this thing. There was one other video that, or maybe two other videos that I saw where someone kind of demonstrated that. I don't feel like I really need to, even though this camera's not that very popular because it's an off-brand, but it works very well. Um, there was only, like I said, two videos that went over the, um, uh, the settings. Um... I guess we can do that. I guess we could do that. I mean, I guess it would be just more informative that way. Let me, the problem is, is when you power this on, you only have a very small amount of, of power on this thing. And that's basically because it just saves the time and date stamp for you. But let's see if we can go through the whole thing before it powers off. Okay. So on the right, you're going to have your um, OK button, which is basically your enter for the menu options. You're going to have your um, manual button, which chooses which, uh, which um, how, you want to, how you want the camera to actually look once it's connected um, between the two, which is your front camera and rear camera. We could probably do that now. I can connect it because you'll see what I'm saying. There you go. So 
there's the other camera right there. We'll just aim it at the at the desk for now, just so you see that it is working. But you see how it pushes itself up to the far right, top uh, right corner of the of the, of the screen. Um, so if you wanted to, you would hit the menu, and now it's doing only the front camera. Now that's the oh, I'm sorry, that's not what I wanted. My mistake. Hold on. There we go. So now, I'm sorry, it's the opposite side. So guys, what I decided to do is I just went ahead and uh, used my little uh, battery pack and connected power to it. So therefore we don't have to rush and um, we have enough power to go through the whole, uh, you know, menu settings and all that good stuff. So let me go ahead and plug in the rear view camera real quick. And let's see here. So on the right side, right? Okay, well, first of all, you have your, and I'm sorry, guys, this is actually a um, mini USB power port. I'm sorry, I was thinking micro, but mini is what I was looking for. And I think I did say it earlier. But anyway, uh, then you have your AV input, your mounting um, bracket, um, your SD card. Uh, here you're going to have a play reverse, play forward, menu button in the center. Uh, you're going to have your menu select button, which is labeled as OK. Then you're going to have your menu option, um, your lock. So once you have it set up, you can lock it. That way there's no accidental pushing a button and changing it from what you've already uh, set it up to. And then last one's the power button. So let's go ahead and go to, if you hit the top um you can see it here. It has like a fast forward or reverse uh, play uh, icon. If you click that, um, I'm sorry, if you click the center one, I'm sorry, the, the, the center, that's going to take you to your options. And then you'll use the forward and back to basically go up and down your menu. So you can choose the resolution, uh, dual camera setup, loop recording, interval record, wide dynamic range, exposure, motion detection, microphone, date stamp, gravity sensor, parking monitor. If you click the menu button again, that's going to take you to screen saver, auto power off, frequency, key sound, languages, uh, date and time, format the SD, and default settings. Um, <clears throat> if you click it again, that's going to take you right back where you were. Uh, if you go over to the uh, far right and you click OK, that's going to start recording. Or if you have it set up to, by that little icon, if you have it set up to uh, a camera, you would take a snapshot. Let me show you that real quick. Hang on. Oops, I'm sorry. And this very bottom button if you're not in the menu section, that just basically mutes. I don't know if you can see the little microphone down here. It will mute. See how I crossed it out? Or unmute your mic. Um, if you click menu, that's what I was looking for. So the menu button on the far right, which is the um, second button down from the OK button, that changes it from camera. You can see by the icon. Now it's on camera. That's playback and video. So if we go back to camera, if you hit the OK button, it'll just take a snapshot. You can hear that. Um, so let's get back to video. Right there. Uh, if you click the lock button, which is the third button down, that just locks the screen once it's set up. Uh, if you click the last one, that's going to be your power button. Now, I didn't want to go into full detail with the menus. It's going to make this video a lot longer, guys. Um, so look, if you go to resolution, you hit OK. You can go from uh, VGA, 720p um, to 1080 um, FD. Uh, full HD, I'm sorry, FHD, full HD. Uh, if you click your bo bottom button down, 
it lets you choose the the forward and back button lets you choose what you what it is you're looking for and if you hit the okay it'll choose that option you have dual camera again if you hit okay you can turn it on or off um let me go back i, I leave it on on you can go to loop recording you got five minutes three minutes one minute and off i have mine set to three minutes oops i don't want to change that let's go ahead and go there uh if you again go down you can go to interval recording hit okay you got 500 milliseconds 200 100 and off um, go ahead and click uh, the OK button. Scroll down to Wide Dynamic Range. Hit OK. It can be either, either on or off. I have mine set to on. Let's hit OK for that option. Let's uh, scroll down. Again, scroll down. Scroll up. Center buttons, the menu. Exposure. Hit OK. You have anywhere from negative 2, negative 1. I think this goes all the way up to, let's see three on each side. Um, I like mine under negative two because without that you get a lot of whitewash in the back of your of your video and uh, especially on a sunny bright day. Uh, for me that works best. It could be different for your depending on how you see your screen but for me that worked better. Uh, hit OK. You've got your motion detection. You can either set that on or off. I have mine set to off. Microphone you can set that on or off. I have mine set on. Date and timestamp, again, I have it on. Gravity sensor, you either have low, medium, or high. I have mine off. Parking monitor, you can either have that on or off. Parking monitor, in case you're wondering, guys, it just means like if somebody uh, taps your vehicle with a shopping cart or bumps into it while they're backing out of their parking uh, location and they, they hit your vehicle this will automatically record uh, for the first I think couple of couple of uh, seconds I think you get like maybe depending on what you set it for three five and I don't I don't remember what the other one was um, I think we went over that let me go back up and find out interval record there you go so it'll default to that so if somebody tapped your vehicle you got 100 milliseconds 200 500 all right and then Let's go back to um, where were we were at. Okay, now if you noticed earlier, we were on this little icon. That's your video settings. Now it's going to be your actual settings. So you have a screensaver option. Again, just hit OK to activate it. 30 seconds, one minute, two minutes off. I have mine set to off. I like to monitor, have my screen on at all times. Uh, that way I know it's actually recording. Um, even though this light would indicate so, I'd rather just be able to see that visually. Um, and then, of course, if you hit the auto, po auto power uh, off, if you choose that, it'll shut off uh, in 10 minutes, 5 minutes, 3 minutes. I have mine off. Like I said, I like to have my screen on. You can choose the frequency. You got 50 hertz, 60 hertz. I set mine to 60. You can uh, shut the beeping sound if you don't prefer to have that. That's what that, that's what that option gives you. And then your language. You've got all these different languages. Date and time, you would again toggle through the top and bottom to set your date and time. I'm just hitting OK because all my stuff is preset. I mean, I'm set the way I like it. And then format, if you want to format your drive, I'll go ahead and... No, I don't want to do that because I'm going to actually take some video to show you guys what it looks like. I don't want to format that. Uh, and then you can always default to your default settings. And then, of course, your version of what firmware you're running. And uh, that's it. Um, that's all your settings. I hope that wasn't too quick for you guys, but um, that's pretty basic. That's all there is to it. There's not a whole lot in the menu options. Um, so yeah, other than that, guys, let me go ahead and since we went over the settings, um, was I getting video on here? Let's see real quick. Oh, I think I need to change that. I wonder if it'll let me. Oh, I think I have to be recording. Yeah, 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 that's right. So let me go and set this to record. Oh, wait. Uh, thought that was the one. I'll explain to you guys here in a minute what I'm trying to show you. Nope, I don't want a photo. Nope, I don't want that. 
there we go. It's recording and it's locked. Um, let me unlock it. You'll notice that little icon up there disappeared. So let me show you again on the very top where the actual recording icon is that you'll see a little lock come up. That's lock. That's unlocked. The reason why I want to unlock it is because I want to see if we can change uh, the camera. Um, actually, let me see here. I want to see if we can switch the cameras. That's record. Um, okay, guys, in case you're trying to wonder what I was trying to figure out is that apparently when I had the battery pack connected it assumed i guess it was connected to a pc therefore only allowing me to upload or download video um, that's why i wasn't able to get the rear camera to function uh, it has to be on its own power as if you would have it in the vehicle ready to record upon uh, power up so if you'll power it on now you'll see what i'm talking about <clears throat> okay so as soon as we connect it you'll get video so that's all it was. Uh, that's why I was trying to figure out what, why what, why I wasn't able to get video. But if I plug that in, uh, I won't be. It won't. It won't access the uh, video for whatever reason. Uh, just to show you, it wasn't a fluke. It works. And the reason why I wanted to bring this up, guys, because uh, now, great, the battery's running low. Uh, let's see what happens if I actually f connect this in there. Oh, will it continue staying that way? Let's see. Yes, cool, okay. So I found out something. Uh, in, well, in my case, because I'm doing the video, just to show you guys, if I have power connected prior to connecting the camera, you won't be able to a function the camera properly, it won't even work. However, if the camera turns on first and then you apply power, then you're good to go. So anyway, enough of that. Here's what I wanted to point out. So if you hit the uh, fast forward button, you'll be able to switch between screens. So right now it's on the far top right, the uh, the little backup camera. If we switch it over or, you know, tap it once, now you have split screen. You got your front camera, your rear camera. You click it again. You have your front. You click it again. Now it's just your rear camera. Oh, in case you're wondering too, guys, the camera, front camera records in full HD. The rear camera only records in 720p, just so you're aware. Uh, and if you click it again, it'll go up to the far right. I'd like to have mine this way so I can monitor what's going on behind me at a glance. And also it's recording what's happening in front of me. That's what I wanted to show you guys. So, um, and then you saw that from the time I showed you the settings and all that till now, which wasn't really that long, maybe five minutes, the battery started draining out. Like I said, it's it's only going to supply enough power to the internal battery to keep the date and timestamp active. That's all that's for. So you're not going to be able to just charge this and have hours with it, it unfortunately. Um, okay, guys. So at this point, let's go ahead and get it installed. Um, and we'll go from there. And then I'll also include some video. I think I have some video clips of daytime me riding, but I don't think I have any at night. I don't really drive too much at night. I usually get home pretty early um or try to anyway so yeah we'll go from there all right guys okay guys okay guys here we are in my little kia and um as you can see i don't have a rear view mirror here in the state of texas as long as you got your right and left uh side mirrors you don't have to have the rear view mirror and that's a that's why i like the fact that i'm going to have this here and that i'm uh, and that this camera comes with the uh, rear view ca uh, camera because that's going to act as my backup camera. So let me go ahead and uh, as you can see this is previously from the GK or a GMAC. Uh, again it's the mini uh, USB power cable which fits perfectly here so I don't have to worry about running any new uh, power cable. But if you're wondering I ran it underneath the headliner all the way down to the side of the door panel underneath the dash and then as you can see it's connected right here through this power uh, this cigarette power adapter I've got two connected I've got one for my camera and the other ones for my power to my um, uh, this is my uh, uh, GPS uh, GPS and uh, I, I take that off when I come inside the house and then when I 
get back in the car I use it or if I need it for any reason um, instead of using my cell phone but anyway I'm getting off subject here let me go ahead and get started guys on how I'm gonna run this through let me get it untangled they give you plenty of cable so you shouldn't have a problem if you drive along the Kia is a very short based or short sized vehicle I'm not gonna need a whole lot of cable um, most of this will probably be probably be, have to be tucked somewhere and my idea is as I had it with the GMAC um, I'm gonna let it run about right there I'm gonna run it all the way through underneath under all that header and then all the way to the back and then hopefully we'll go from there so let me let me get started now remember I gave you that they give us that little tool you don't need it as you can see I've already undone the headliner just a tad bit just to sneak my cable up in there you don't really need to have that tool it's nice that they sent it but you really don't need it I mean you, you'll do fine without it you could just use your fingers all right let me get on the other side because I got to take some of the weather stripping down I got to get this opened up so yeah hang on in case you're wondering guys um, for the first time I'm actually using a head mounted action camera um, so hopefully it's gonna capture everything that I'm doing I sure hope so okay let's see how did I do this last time did I take this off I think I pulled down the weather stripping There we go. Okay guys, so I apologize, um, my damn action camera SD card got full and I was shooting in 4K not realizing it, so I'm going to continue with my uh, iPhone. Uh, those little sticky things that came with the package actually came in pretty handy. As you can see, I ran the cable all the way through, brought it around, and this was my screw up. I had already ran the cable behind my tailgate. And there's the camera um, so I had to run it behind the panel alongside and that other tool that came with the package which was this guy came in handy too however it was kind of flimsy but it was it lasted long enough to push the cabling in between the glass and the frame pretty pretty uh, came out pretty good 
and then I, I dropped it down. So the idea would have been for this to go inside behind the weather panel or weather strip, but I kind of messed up and went on the outside. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it like that. It's such a thin wire. It's not really gonna affect anything. It'll be fine other than it cosmetically not looking all that great. But with the tailgate down, who the hell's gonna care? Um, and then I had to run my cable. This is just an extension because the cable was too the the cable was too short, the positive. So I just um, to make the gauge a little bit more thicker, I put two um, power cables, lower gauge, but made them equally by putting them together. Ran it to my positive on the reverse light, and then let me show you what happens now that it's attached to the um, uh, rear tail uh, backup light. So I was correct. Um, the camera will not automatically turn to the rear view screen if you don't have power to it. So there's two reasons why you want power. One, for the camera to activate as you're reversing, and two, to give you the LEDs um, to light up at night. Now in my case, I forgot to do it, but I'm gonna cover up my LEDs because what's gonna happen is when they hit this glass, they're gonna shine and it's not gonna look good. So I'll have to do that later. I already put it on there with some sticky tape. I'm gonna have to try to seal them and cover them up. Um, so let me show you what happens here. Oh, I wish I would have known I was recording in 4K. Um, otherwise my SD card would have lasted longer. So if you turn it on. I'll mount this suction cup here in a minute. I just want to show you guys what this is going to look like. So you see now I got a visual. So this is what's going to happen when you turn on the car. The car's on. And as you notice, I'm gonna put it in reverse. And there you go. The camera, the camera uh, actually initiates the reverse. So I'm gonna take it off, put it back in reverse, take it off, put it back in reverse. So yeah, without that power cable being connected to your reverse light, uh, or backup light it's not gonna it's not gonna activate now the camera will still work like it is now uh, it's shutting off because I turned the car off but you won't you'll have to actually manually uh, if you're gonna reverse and you want to see what's behind you you're gonna have to manually adjust it according uh, you know according to when you're gonna back up um, so now guys I'm gonna go ahead and just put everything together um, tidy it all up um, pretty much that's it I just wanted to show you and then again I'm gonna go ahead and seal that with electrical tape so I don't get a short in case it rains just like I did here uh, the only drawback is this and I'm a I'm a real it bothers me that I see this but in order for me to fix that I would have had to unmount this take the cable out um, pull the pull the cable back disconnect it from the camera bring it in bring it all the way around and then redo this whole thing and i didn't want to do that i might do it later on because that bothers me i kind of want it to look much better than that um so yeah other than that that's it guys i'll go ahead and uh, finish off with just putting um some videos of the quality and uh yeah we'll go from there hey guys just to let you all know i did fix that issue uh and i went ahead and just remounted it using those little uh, holders that come with the with the um, camera kit and to me that looks a lot better and you can see where it hides behind the weather strip and the only little piece you see is the positive where it goes into the rear tail light so yeah there it is all complete let me go ahead and close it and you can barely see the camera you can barely see it let me go ahead and reverse show you guys what it looks like real quick and then I'll just mount it there it is as a matter of fact you can actually see the LEDs lighting up already see them right there one two three four 
I'll probably just end up uh, blocking them off with some electrical tape like I did the last time when I connected it to with the uh, GMAC. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed. That's about it. I'm gonna go ahead and just mount this up about right here where I had it before. And uh, that's a done deal. Hope you enjoyed the video.